Hi y'all, it's Laura Coyle and in this video I want to talk about the brand new Illustrator feature in Illustrator 2023, Intertwine. And first I want to show you the basics of how to use it and then a few tips for making it work for you. All right, so this is a really simple example. I've got a path here that has a pattern brush applied to it and then I have some type here that is live font type. And I'm just going to take these two objects, select them together and then go up to the object menu and down to intertwine, a brand new command here in the menu, and then choose make. And once you do this, you get this little uh, lasso tool here. And all you need to do is just lasso around the parts that you want to go behind the type. So I'll come over here. I want this in front. I want this right here to go behind. So I'll draw a lasso around that. Looks good. That's in front. This one's behind. And there we've got it. So now we have this nice object where a brush is just weaving through the word cool. All right, so let's take a look at what this object is. When I select it, I can look at it in the upper left corner and see that this is an intertwine now. So this is kind of a special object. It's really functioning like a group. Um, if I want, I can come over to the quick actions at the bottom of the properties panel and release this by clicking on the button here. And then I go back to having just two plain old objects, not grouped or anything. Let me undo that. And if I want to make any edits to the ins and outs, the actual intertwining, then I can click on edit down here in the properties panel. And both of these commands are also here under the object menu, intertwine, we've got release and edit. So those are the things you can do when you have an intertwine object selected. Now let's look at this in the layers panel. So if I pop out the layers panel here, I can see in layer one, I've got an intertwine object. So when I click on this, I can see the path inside and the lettering inside. So this really is a group and you can, if you want to drag other objects in here and make them intertwine. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But first, let's just take a look at some things that I've noticed as I've been playing with this. So I'm going to select my object and then I'm going to click on edit down at the bottom of the properties panel. And now I've got that lasso tool so I can go back to editing here. I'll zoom in a little bit. And if I do kind of a sloppy selection drawing right there, you can see this is not it's coming forward, but not totally. So the way that you draw your selection is actually important here. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that to go back to where I was. And when you see that I undo that change, the tool that I have here is not the lasso tool. So I still have to go back down while this object is selected and click on edit. And this, this way I can come in here and draw this hopefully a little bit more clearly so that I don't wind up with any of that odd stuff going on there. And that time it worked. So this is just a little back and forth that you may have to do. And one thing that I've noticed is, you know, it works really nicely with a path like this, something that has a stroke on it or a brush on it. Um, if you expand this, you get into all these little objects and sometimes that can be more difficult. I think this is the type of thing where you just kind of have to play with it and find out where sort of where the tolerance for, you know, extra stuff is here. This is a brand new feature and you know, it will probably improve as we work with it and use it more. Um, but for right now, uh, there are a few things that you got to be careful of. So let's see, I'm just going to try this right here again, see if I want to, you know, bring this part forward here. I'm going to draw a big kind of sloppy selection and it works just fine. So it all depends. Like if I just draw, you know, right here, you can see, it's kind of cool. I made it look like it was punching through the O there, but um, if that's not what you want, then it's good to know that you just need to be careful the way you draw your selections. All right, so now that we've covered that, let's take a look at adding more objects. So when you have more than just two things that you're trying to intertwine. Okay, so I've reset my object here. I've got a new intertwine going. And one thing that I forgot to mention before we move on to multiple objects is that you can use your white arrow and you know make some edits here. And I'm just clicking right there and changing 
you know, the curve of the path. And once again, there's a certain level of tolerance for this. If you try to go really super crazy, you're going to open up some of these little areas right here. So you might want to just make your edits not too dramatic in this case. All right. So I've selected this with my uh, white arrow, partially because I just wanted to have that brush appearance ready. Um, now what I'm going to do is grab the paintbrush tool and I'll just draw a line right here that I want to weave through and I'll draw another one right here. Okay. And to keep these looking different so we can tell them apart, I'm going to change the stroke color here because I have a brush that actually um, has the tints uh, colorization method applied. All right. So this is odd looking art, I understand, but it's just for the sake of example here. All right. So what I have is my intertwine object. And then I have these two new paths that I've drawn here on top of it. Well, what if I want to add these to the intertwine object? Well, to do this, I'm going to open up my uh, layers panel. And here on layer one, I have, of course, the intertwine functions like a group, and then these two individual paths. I can turn the carrot down here and see these. And maybe what I'll just do is drag these two green paths into the intertwine object. And now they're a part of this object. They're a part of this group. Um, and so that means that I can come in and edit. So let's come here and select this. And then I'm going to go down to the quick actions and edit the intertwine. And of course that gives me the little lasso tool. So I'm going to zoom in here. Look at this one right here. Now there's a shortcut that you can use here. And that is the shift key. What the shift key does is it allows you to make sort of a rectangular marquee selection. And when I do this, you can see as I hover here, I get these different highlights. So this is what happens. And, and this would work e even if I had drawn with the lasso tool. This is what happens when you have multiple things selected inside of your intertwine. So I've got one path here, one path here, and then of course the type behind it. So as I hover here, Illustrator's asking me, you know, what, which part of this do you want to intertwine? So let's say that I want this green path to go behind the magenta path. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is as it's highlighted there, right click on it and send it to back. And we can see that it comes to the back there. And maybe I want this part of it to come in front of the type. So I'm going to once again, just do that kind of lasso tool drawing there and now it's in front. So that's how you work with multiple objects. And um, you can start with multiple objects before you create your intertwine or you can add them by dragging them in the layers panel. So I'm still playing with this feature, but I want to show you a little bit more. So here I have um, some DNA or something like that. And I've got paths that have that same brush applied here. And I went ahead and intertwine them here doing just what I showed you before going up to the object menu, choosing intertwine, make, and then just lassoing around everything as I wanted it to move there. And then I thought, well, what if I want to have a, a drop shadow like this? So let's go ahead and I'll show you how I did this. So I'm just copying this intertwine object here and I'll zoom in a little bit and I'll open up the appearance panel. And the first thing that I want to do, because we can see this intertwine here is an object, it has contents, but the way that this seems to work better is if I go ahead and get my white arrow out and just treat these paths individually. So here I have this purple path, there it is in the appearance panel. And then I just go to FX and choose stylize drop shadow like that. And now it's applying the drop shadow. I can make any adjustments that I want to here and then click OK. And I'll do the same thing for the other. So you can just get this, apply the drop shadow. I'm not sure in that last example if I applied it to the stroke or just to the whole uh, path. Um, this is working just fine applying it to the path. So I'm going to click OK. And there we go. We have a drop shadow applied to each of those individual paths inside of that intertwine object. Now I am noticing, I mean, for the most part, it looks really good, but there's a little bit of a flaw or something funky happening there. So I was like, well, is that intertwine or is that 
you know, this kind of crazy pattern brush path. So I went over, let's back out here and tried it on something really simple, just a thick blue stroke and yellow stroke. So in this case, I've made um, an intertwine object here and did the same thing. I just applied a drop shadow to the yellow path or the gold path here. And you can see there's the drop shadow. Same thing, applied it to the blue path uh, separately, just selecting it with a white arrow and then applying that in the appearance panel. And it works great without any of those little weird artifacts there. So it was really the pattern brush that was kind of overloading uh, things there. All right, so that's the new intertwine feature and all the fun stuff I've been playing with. I know there's a lot more. Uh, so I'm going to keep on looking at it and I'll let you know if I find anything interesting out about it. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to my YouTube channel because I make videos about Adobe Illustrator and other related programs, Illustrator on the iPad, Fresco, and more. All right. My name's Laura Coyle. Thank you for watching.